I'm Steven Olo, a lecturer in electrical engineering. I'll be taking you through a unit called power electronics. And our topic for today will be on rectifiers. So actually, rectifiers is also a common topic to those who are doing instrumentation and control under a subject called industrial electronic. So both of them share the topic, so it is common to the two options. That is the power option and the instrumentation and control option. So in rectifiers, I will start by defining what rectification is. So rectification, we can define it as the conversion of alternating quantity to DC quantity. So you can say it is the conversion of AC quantity AC quantity to DC quantity. So after that definition, now we shall look at the types of rectifiers. So normally we have two types of rectifiers. Types of rectifiers. So there are normally two. The first one is what we call uncontrolled rectifiers. Uncontrolled rectifiers. And the uncontrolled rectifiers, they use diodes only as the rectifying device. So they use diodes only as the rectifying device. As the rectifying device. So why do we call it uncontrolled? Because we know that a diode, once it is forward biased, the current will flow immediately without any delay. So the next type of rectifier is what we call controlled rectifiers. How the controlled rectifiers. The controlled rectifiers, they use the thyristors, and most commonly, they use the SCR, that is the silicon controlled rectifiers, or sometimes they use a combination of both SCR and diodes. So we can say that they use thyristors they use thyristors as the rectifying device. As the rectifying device or a combination, a combination of thyristor and diodes. 
and diodes. So the thyristor are commonly used is the SCR, the thyristor commonly used is the SCR, that is the silicon controlled rectifiers. So these are the types of rectifiers that we are going to look at. So I will start with uncontrolled rectifiers. So I can say uncontrolled rectification. Then under uncontrolled rectification, I will start with single-phase half-wave rectifier. So the first one will be single-phase half-wave rectifier. So we'll have the circuit diagram. This is our circuit diagram. So, so that is the circuit diagram for the single phase single phase half wave should add the word wave single phase half wave rectifier whereby we have one diode as the rectifying device and we know that the voltage across the load will be a dc voltage then you can also have the waveforms you can also have the waveforms So this is the circuit diagram for single phase half wave and these are the waveform whereby the first one here can say Roman 1. This is the waveform of our input which is sinusoidal. Then we have the output waveform. The output waveform. So this is what happens. During the positive half cycle of our AC mains, of our AC mains, our diode will be forward biased, meaning this point A will be positive with respect to point B, and therefore the diode will conduct. That's why you can see from the output waveform that during the positive half cycle there is an output but during the negative half cycle of our input you can see now point b will be positive with respect to point a and therefore our diode will be reverse biased and as we know that a diode is a unilateral device meaning it only allows current to flow in one direction when it is forward biased. So when it is reverse biased, no current flows through the diode. That's why we don't have any 
output here. So from there, now we want to carry out the analysis. We see the expressions for the outputs, DC, output voltage, DC, current, and also the root mean square values, as well as what we call performance parameters of the rectifier. So analysis. analysis so an analysis we shall start by getting the mean voltage why do we talk of the mean voltage that is the DC voltage here because our output it is not a pure DC it contains some AC ripples so we normally get the average so we can talk of the DC or the mean value. So the first one will be the mean value, which sometimes we denote as the VDC. VDC. And this is normally how we get it. Since it is single phase, it is going to be one all over. 2 pi, 2 pi is the period. If you look at our input waveform, so the period is 2 pi. Then we integrate. So we normally, when integrating, we consider the half, which is from 0 to pi. So we consider we take the half cycle from 0 to pi of our input Vm sine theta d theta. So from our knowledge of integration, we know that if we integrate sine theta, we are going to get negative cos theta as our Vm is a constant. So we shall have Vm all over 2 pi into negative cos theta is from 0 to pi. So if we simplify this, it will give us Vm all over pi. So the mean value or the VDC of a single phase half wave rectifier will be Vm all over pi. That is the first one. Then you can also get the DC current that flows through the load. So we can talk of the IDC. So IDC will be equal to our VDC divided by the load current, divided by the load resistance. So we can have RF plus R whereby our RF is the forward resistance of the diode and our R is the load resistance. So sometimes you may find that RF is negligible because the forward resistance in AC is normally very small unless you are given. So, but already we have our VDC here, which is going to be Vm all over pi into Rf plus R. So that one will give you the IDC. So, if you have your calculator, we can get this to be 0 0.318, that is 1 over pi, so Vm all over Rf, Rf plus R. The same here, we can say this is 0 0.318 Vm, yeah. So those are very, very important parameters here. Then the next one 
we can get what we call the root mean square. The root mean square. So before I get to the root mean square, since we know that the waveform of current and voltage, they are similar, then the same procedure that we have used here to get the VDC, we can also use it to get the IDC. So we can say, or alternatively, we can say that IDC is going to be 1 all over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi. Now, I m, that is the maximum, I m, I m sine theta d theta, which is going to give us the same thing. So, so this will be I m all over 2 pi. I m all over 2 pi into negative cos theta from 0 to pi. And this will give us, this will give us V m, I mean, so we shall get I m over pi. This will give us I m all over pi. So, which you can see was the same thing here, but we know that I m is from Ohm's law, I m will be V m divided by R f. So, I m will be V divided by R f plus R. So, this approach will also give you VIDC. Now the next parameter is the root mean square voltage. Root mean square voltage, which now I'm going to rub here. Let's see. Root mean square voltage. is normally denoted as V R M S. So for the root mean square voltage, V R M S, it is given by, so the square root of 1 all over 2 pi, 1 all over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi into Vm sine theta squared d theta. So if you look at that expression, it is the same expression that we had for Vdc, only that, that we are now squaring our voltage then we are getting the square root of the whole expression here. So, if you simplify this, maybe one step here. If you square that, Vm, we shall have Vm squared, all over 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi, so our sine squared can be written as a half into 1 minus cos 2 theta, 1 minus cos 2 theta. So if you simplify this and substitute the limits, we are going to get Vm over 2. So our Vrms going to be Vm all 
all over 2. So that is the expression for the root mean square voltage. So we can also get the root mean square current. So you can say that I R M S will be equal to V R M S divided by our resistance R F plus R. So ready we have our VRMS which is going to be VM all over 2 into RF plus R. Yes. So actually this one you can write it as 0 0.5 Vm all over Rf plus R. That one will give you the root mean square current. So you can also say that Vm divided by this total resistance, that is the resistance of the load plus the forward resistance of the diode will give you I M. So it can also be written as 0 0.5 I M. Yes. V M divided by total resistance will give you I M. So that is our root mean square current. Even here, you can say that V R M S is 0 0.5 V M is allowed. So now from there we want to look at what we call performance parameters of our circuit here. The performance parameters whereby actually these parameters they are the ones that define the performance of our rectifiers. So under performance parameters so parameters defining parameters defining performance of rectifiers. The first parameter here will start with what we call the voltage regulation. Voltage regulation. Whereby voltage regulation is given by this expression here VNL minus VF. L all over VFL. So these initials here stands for, so we can say where VNL stands for no load voltage, no load voltage. And VFL stands for full load voltage. Full load. Full load voltage. And normally, our voltage regulation is given into percentage. So if you multiply by 100, you'll get voltage regulation into percentage. Then we also have what we call the rectifier efficiency. 
rectifier efficiency. How efficient is our rectifier here? So, rectifier efficiency. So rectify efficiency, which is normally denoted by the symbol here, is normally given by the output DC power, output DC power, all over the input AC power, over the input AC power. So how do we get the output DC power? And how do we get the input AC power? So, but we know that the output DC power, you can denote it as PDC, will be given by VDC squared divided by the total resistance. That expression will give us the output DC power. We denote it as the PDC. Then for the AC input power, Before I get to the AC input power, we had derived an expression for VDC, which was Vm all over pi. So, you can say VDC is Vm over pi, so this will be Vm squared all over pi squared. But we know that our R total is Rf plus R. So that expression will give you the PDC. RF, as I said, is the forward resistance of the diode. R is the load resistance. Now, how do we get the input AC power? Very simple. So the AC power, which we call the PAC, PAC will be VRMS squared. We divide by the load resistance R. We divide it by load resistance R. So, and already we had our VRMS, we had derived the VRMS as VM over 2. So, this will be Vm squared all over 4 R. Because we know that Vrms was Vm over 2. So, if you square that, you get Vm squared all over 4. So, now to get our efficiency, which we say percentage efficiency. Now, percentage efficiency will be given by Vm squared all over pi squared Rf plus R plus R divide by, so we shall multiply by the reciprocal. So, which is 4R all over Vm squared. I know you may be asking that in the PAC, why are we not considering RF? Actually, normally for the AC, RF is normally very small, which, and it is negligible, so we neglect. So, from here, you are going to have if you simplify that, we shall have 4 all over pi squared. So 4 all over pi 
squared, then we shall have r over then rf plus r. So from here, 4 all over pi squared will give us 0 0.406. Zero point four it should be zero point four zero six. Then this will be R all over R F plus R. So we can simplify this expression and have we can rewrite it as 0 0.4, 0 0.06, all over 1 plus Rf, all over R. So, if you multiply these by 100, okay, by 100, it will give you, okay, I can continue this side. So we can say that our percentage efficiency, it will give us 0 0.46. So if you multiply by 100, you will get 40.6%. That is if this RF is very small compared to R, so it will give us 0 plus 1. So RF, very small compared to R. So it means this expression now will be approaching 0. So we shall have 0 0.406 times 100 over 1, which gives us 40.6%. So you can see the efficiency of a single phase half wave rectifier, how small it is, it is only 40.6%. <coughs> there is also another parameter which we call the form factor. Form factor, which is normally given by the RMS voltage or RMS value all over DC value. So RMS value all over the DC value. So when I talk of value here, it can be RMS current or RMS voltage. So we had derived this. RMS value was VM all over 2. DC was VM all over pi, was VM all over pi. So if you simplify this, it gives you pi over 2. So it will give you pi over 2, which is giving us 1.57. And you can confirm this for a single phase. The form factor is normally 1.57. Now we can go to another parameter. That is what we call the ripple factor. Ripple factor. So normally, ripple factor, this factor gives you the lack of smoothness of the waveform. As I said that our output waveform here is not a pure DC. It contains some AC ripples. So this parameter here, it gives us the lack of smoothness of the waveform. So, which is normally given by the value of RMS AC components, 
R, M, S, A, C component divided by the value of DC component. Value of DC component. So now we can get it VRMS. So there is a step here. We know that VRMS is given by the square root of VDC squared plus VAC squared. So from here, we can get the expression of VAC. So VAC will be the square root of VRMS squared minus V R M S squared minus our VDC squared. So now we have the VAC. So now we can get the ripple factor. So therefore, the ripple factor is normally given by that symbol, is given by the value of RMS AC component, which is the square root of V RMS squared minus VDC squared. All these we divide by our VDC divided by VDC. So if you simplify this, it will give you the VRMS, the square root of VRMS squared all over VDC squared. VDC squared minus 1. That is the simplification. Actually, this is what will give you the ripple factor. And if you look at this expression, VRMS all over VDC was our form factor. So we can also say that ripple factor, it is the square root of form factor squared minus 1. Yes. So that one will also give you the ripple factor. So another important parameter that you are going to look at is what we call the peak inverse voltage. was number four, Roman five is the peak inverse voltage. That is what we call the PIV. Actually, the peak inverse voltage, it refers to the maximum voltage that a diode can withstand when it is reverse biased. So when it is reverse bias, there is that maximum voltage it is able to withstand without getting damaged. Sometimes we normally say when it is in its blocking state. So blocking state is the same as saying that reverse biased. 
reverse biased. So normally for single phase, single phase, half wave rectifier, the PIV is normally equals to VM. Is normally equals to VM. And VM is normally root 2 times our VRMS. Our VRMS. That one will give you the peak inverse voltage. That is for single phase half wave rectifier. Then there is also a parameter known as the transformer utility factor. So that is number six, transformer utility. Transformer utility factor. UTF, which is normally given by what we call DC power across the load. So TUF equals to DC power across the load. all over the transformer secondary rating, or we call it AC power rating of transformer secondary. AC power rating of the transformer secondary. So, which we can have here. PDC, maybe you can give it in terms of current. So we have our PDC all over the PAC. So I am, in terms of current, I am all over pi squared times the load resistance, RL. That is the PDC, then PAC we shall have VM all over root 2 over root 2. We multiply by IM over 2. IM all over 2. So if we simplify this. Shall get zero point two eight six. So this will give us zero point two eight six all over one plus RD or one plus RL all over R. Actually, R is the resistance of the load. RF is the resistance, so this should be RF, this is RL. The forward resistance of the diode, RL is the resistance of the load, whereby if RF, so if RF is very much smaller than our RL, then TUF will be equals to 0 0.26. Yes. So those are the parameters that define the performance of a single phase half wave rectifier. So maybe you can look at the limitations or disadvantages of this single phase half wave rectifier.
limitations. Limitations of single phase half wave rectifier. Shall just mention them because we can see them from the parameters that we have just looked at. So one of them, high ripple factor, high ripple factor. And then number two, poor voltage regulation. Poor voltage regulation. Then number three, you also have high form factor. High form factor. Number four, we can talk of low efficiency, which we saw it was around 40%. Low efficiency. Low efficiency. Number five, we can talk of the low transformer utilization factor. Low transformer utilization. factor. Yes, yeah, so those are some of the limitations of the single phase half wave rectifier. Then for what you have gone through here, we were considering a case whereby our load was purely resistive. So maybe now we can go through a circuit which contains an inductive load. So we shall just look at the circuit and how the waveforms will appear. So now we also consider a circuit which contains resistance and inductor. So we talk of single phase. Half wave rectifier. With RL. So for our circuit here, it is still single phase half wave, but now our load contains both an inductor and a resistor. So we can talk of inductive load. Then also an additional thing here, we have a diode here known as the free wheeling diode. And actually, it is used to prevent the load voltage from reverse biasing our diode here. That is the work of the free wheeling diode. Then we know that an inductor is an energy storage device. So you find that at the point when our current is pi, the current will not go to zero, but will flow for some angle, alpha, before it gets to zero. So because of the inductive law, the current will not be zero at the point pi. But now our angle 
will be omega t now will be pi plus the angle alpha. So from here, if we are to get the VDC, so therefore VDC, that is the DC voltage now, our limits will change. So it is 1 all over 2 pi, the integral now from 0 to pi plus alpha, please. So because our current was not 0 at point pi. So this will be Vm sine theta d theta. So omega t here is the same as theta. You can also say theta equals to pi plus alpha. So if you work it out, you'll find that this is Vm all over 2 pi into negative cos theta from 0 to pi plus alpha. From 0 to pi plus alpha. If you simplify this, you'll have Vm all over 2 pi into 1 minus cos, it will be 1 minus the cosine of pi plus alpha. So that will be the VDC. So that's the difference which need to be noted. Then as usual, if you want IDC, IDC will be VDC divided by our R F plus R L. Yes. So that's all about single phase half wave rectifier. So now the next type of rectifier is what we call the full wave rectifier. Full wave rectifier. So now we look at the full wave rectification. <laughs> 